Good afternoon, Yusek. First off, what measures are we talking about here apart from, you know, uniform curfew hours? Well, uh, the curfew hours is really the centerpiece of what we're requesting the local government units uh, because we noticed that they have different curfew hours at present. Some of them have adjusted to 10 o'clock, uh, others at 12 o'clock, uh, while um, some of them have 3 o'clock, up to 3 o'clock in the morning, and some at 4 o'clock in the morning. So we feel that it would be easier for the public to comply with these regulations if these are uniform across uh, Metro Manila. Uh, you said this uh, is not the first time that we want to roll out uniform curfew hours. We've experienced this last year. Have you guys formally reached out to the NCR mayors? And if so, how did they respond to this proposition? Uh, yes, we have. And uh, we have received very positive uh, news from them. Uh, they are already coordinating among themselves for a uniform curfew. Uh, you're correct that uh, last year, we already imposed curfew, and it was very beneficial to the public to have one curfew hours among uh, the 17 uh, local government units here in uh, Metro Manila. So we expect that the mayors uh, should make announcements starting tonight or even maybe tomorrow. All right, so we'll expect uh, some sort of shift and some announcements from some of our mayors in the NCR. Sir, uh, moving on now to another topic, which is a kind of harder uh, compared to, you know, implementation or an announcing uniform hours. How do we ensure that these protocols will be observed by the public? Is there a plan among um, all the mayors and LGUs in the NCR? Well, it's been a year since we've been implementing all of these health protocols, so we already have some best practices uh, that we can utilize. We're deploying additional police officers in crowded places. We're also mobilizing our barangay officials and uh, the barangay discipline brigade. No, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it's really about uh, the cooperation of the public. It's really about individual discipline and individual responsibility because. Um, we do not have the manpower to guard or, you know, uh, monitor each and every individual in Metro Manila. So we appeal to the public for your cooperation. Uh, we are doing what we can, given our limited resources. But, you know, the success of the implementation of minimum health protocols ultimately rests on the public. That's right. Initiative and discipline. I will not argue with you there. But on the flip side, Yusek, what will happen to violators? Will they be meted out with a uniform punishment as well, like jail terms, fines, community service, or something like that? Um, these things are now at the discretion of the local government units. Um, we leave it to them because each of these local government units has their own city council, which has the authority to pass ordinances. And uh, the legal basis for the imposition, for example, of the curfew is the ordinance passed by the LGU. So some LGUs are more lenient than others. Um, in terms of first offense, if you are not wearing a face mask or a face shield, they would just warn you. Uh, but some immediately impose a fine. So it's incumbent upon the individual uh, to know what those uh, penalties are. However, uh, I just wish to emphasize that we are not doing this uh, to make arrests. No, it is not the policy of government to make arrests because, you know, uh, our detention facilities, uh, for one, are already full. So uh, we don't want to exacerbate the situation. What we would wish to ensure simply is that people um, uh, comply with uh, minimum health standards. And if we can do so by calling their attention or by finding them, then we're, we're fine with that. All right, uh, nice to know that, uh, sir. Now, the DALG also announced uniform travel protocols. This is, of course, on a more national level. Can you say, Yusak, that LGUs have been compliant with these so far? Majority of the LGUs have been uh, compliant, but there still are some LGUs in the country uh, which are still awaiting a formal memorandum circular from the DILG. Uh, they would like to see the implementing rules and regulations of IATF Resolution Number 101. And we expect to release that very soon just to um, give the LGUs the, the, the documents that they need, uh, that they said they need, so they can implement all of these um, new regulations. But let me emphasize that the travel authority, uh, as of now, is no longer required. 
the health certificate is also not required, but it would be good for the traveler, for the domestic traveler, to first check with an LG of destination if uh, there is a requirement for a RT-PCR test. Because uh, if, it, if there's a requirement, then he has to comply. Otherwise, he or she may not be allowed to enter the local government unit. All right. Thank you for those clarifications, your time and insights. DALG spokesperson Jonathan Malaya on the line.